All right, guys, we're going to look at graphing systems of equations in a little bit more detail today. So what do we do if we're trying to graph an equation that is not written in slope-intercept form? Well, the first thing that I want to do is get them in slope-intercept form because I know how to graph equations that are written in slope-intercept form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it so that the 3x term is on the other side. When I move it from here to here, it has to become a negative, right? What I did was I subtracted 3x from both sides. So 3x take away 3x, it's gone. If I do it on this side, I have to come over here and subtract it on the other side. And I can't combine it with that 10 because this has an x and this doesn't. So I'm going to keep it as 5y equals negative 3x plus 10. So now I want to get y all by itself. It's being times by 5. To, so, so to undo that multiplication, I use division. So I want to divide, divide, divide every single term. So I'm left with y equals negative 3 fifths x. And 5 divided by 10 can be simplified, or 10 divided by 5 can be simplified to a positive 2. I want to come over here to my graph. And I'm going to plot the points. I've got 2. That's my y-intercept, and then my slope tells me to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right, 5. Or I could go up 3 and to the left, 5, since it is negative. All right, so now let's connect our points with a line, and then we're going to solve the other equation. Okay, so now let's look at the second equation. I'm going to do it in a different color. I like to color coat mine just to kind of help me keep myself organized. Okay, so again, I want to move the x term over to the other side. Or we can move the 10 over and the 5 over. It doesn't really matter how we do it. I'm just going to go ahead to be consistent and move x over. So I'm subtracting x from each side. x take away x is 0. x subtracted from this side, it becomes a negative x. Okay, so now I'm going to divide everything by negative 5. And I have a positive y is equal to a positive 1 fifth x. A negative divided by a negative is a positive and a positive 2. So again, I want to come over here and plot my point, And I already see their point of intersection, right? The slope is up 1 over 5. Or we could go down 1 and over 5 in this direction. And I connect my points with a line as best as I can. And we see the point of intersection is here at 0, 2. And it's always good to check that, 0, 2. So if I plug in a 0 and a 2 into this equation for x and y, then it should come out right. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 5 times 2 is, in fact, 10. Check it on this one. 0 minus 5 times 2 is 0 minus 10, which is negative 10. So this is a point that lies on both lines of these equations. So there it is. We found the point of intersection. So I encourage you to pause the video for a second and think about this one. This one's a little bit different. Um, in this problem, I don't have an x, and in this problem, I don't have a y, but we can still graph this. So I divide 5 by both sides to get y by itself, and I have y equals 2. Remember back to, uh, I believe it was module 3 when we were graphing, that we we're able to graph lines where y is equal to 2. It doesn't matter what x is, y is still 2. So if x is 1, y is 2. If x is 2, y is 2. If x is 2, y is 3. Oh, nope, if x is 3, y is 2. Confused myself there. So we just keep on going. No matter what my value of x is, my value of y is 2. Okay, so similarly, I want to look at this bottom equation. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself, and I have x equals negative 5. So this time, it doesn't matter what my value of y is. All of my x's are here at negative 5. So where do these two lines intersect? They intersect right here at negative 5, comma, 2 negative 5 comma 2. That is the solution to this system of equations. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and try this one. So again, what I want to do is begin by getting them written in slope-intercept form. 
So I'm going to move the 3x over to the other side by subtract or by adding it to both sides. So I have 2y equals a positive 3x plus 12. Then I'm going to divide everything by 2. So y equals 3 halves x. 12 divided by 2 is a positive 6. So to graph this, I want to start at positive 6. My slope tells me to go up 1, 2, 3, and over 2. We're down one, two, three, and over two. Down one, two, three, and over two. And my slope is positive, so it should be going up as it moves left to right. So it looks like I did this correctly. Okay, so now let's look at the other equation. 6x minus 4y equals 8. I'm going to move the 6x over to the other side. So I'm going to have a negative 6x and a positive 8. I'm going to divide everything by negative 4. And I get y equals 3 halves x minus 2. So I want to start here at positive 2. And my slope tells me to go up 1, 2, 3 over 2, up 1, 2, 3 over 2 down one, two, three, over two. You can see that these lines run right along beside each other. They're never ever going to intersect. So this has no solution. And I could have figured that out without graphing it just by looking at the equations because they have the exact same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. So I know they are parallel lines and they are never going to intersect. All right, for our last problem, it says Denzel is starting a food truck business to sell gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches. He has spent $34,000 on the truck equipment, permits, and other startup costs. Each sandwich costs $1.32 to make, and he sells them for $7 each. How many sandwiches does Denzel need to sell to start earning a profit? So, we know that he has already spent $34,000, and we know that the cost to make a sandwich is $1.32. So what we need to do is define our variables. Let's let x represent maybe the number of sandwiches. Okay, and we'll let y represent profit or earnings or whatever, however you want to call it. Since it says profit here, we'll call it profit. Okay, so so much so far he has spent thirty-four thousand dollars, and he's going to spend a dollar thirty-two for each sandwich. So it's $1.32x, and that gives us profit, okay? Or this gives us the cost, I guess, to make all the sandwich and the startup cost for his business. So the amount of money he earns is going to be $7 per sandwich. So now we have our two equations. We can go over to Desmos and graph those. So I'm going to do that real quick. $34,000 plus $1.32 x so y equals 34,000 plus a dollar 32x and we're looking for where does that intersect y equals 7x so I'm going to have to zoom way way out because we're at $34,000 is where he started spending money so we know he's going to have to make a lot of sandwiches to earn back that $34,000 that he started with to begin with. And it looks like he's going to have to sell a total of 5,985.9 sandwiches. You know, you can't sell 0.9 of a sandwich. So he's going to have to sell 5,986 sandwiches to break even. Anything beyond that, he's going to start earning money. So anything beyond 5,986 sandwiches, he will begin making a profit. So again, it was how many sandwiches must he sell? And the answer was 5,896 sandwiches.